changed. I want to, I want to say something about how God puts things in place. That uh, uh, <clears throat> I've had so many prophetic words from God that are, uh, steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Some of you have heard a bit of my testimony that I've had a bit of a, a rocky road. But I, I was counting it up. I think it was 33 years ago in December. I brought my wife and family up to visit our in-laws who lived up just near Tachikoi. And uh, uh, we were coming up for Christmas holidays and we thought, let's go to Suncoast. We've, we've seen Neil preach at our conferences and it's just such a fantastic church and great worship and all this stuff going on there. Let's go to Suncoast for church on a Sunday. We turned up and uh, 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 they just moved the service forward an hour and we missed all the worship. It was daylight, so I don't know what it was, something. And so we walked in. The worship had just finished. They had an outstanding time in the presence of God. So we thought, oh, well, we, we're here anyway. So we went to sit down, and almost immediately, Neil said, we've got visiting pastors in the house. Why don't you come and stand up on the stage? And so I thought, okay, we're visiting pastors. We're just pastored and pioneered a little church down in country New South Wales. Been there for a couple of years and doing our best. And uh, it was a very interesting journey. And so we, I took my wife, we went up and we stood up on the stage at Suncoast where Neil was pastoring. And Neil said, you know, thank you very much. Let's just honour these pastors and we appreciated that. And I was standing up on the stage at Suncoast and God spoke to me and really surprised me. I was not expecting anything. God spoke to me 33 years ago and said, you will pastor this church. I thought, I don't even live in Queensland. I live in New South Wales. I'm not planning to come here. I don't know how that will happen. I, it, was just, it shocked me. And so when we actually moved up to Queensland 20 years later, I thought, oh, cool, well, God's ordering my steps. He's stepping me in, into where he wants me. And uh, just, okay, God, it's up to you. I'm not going to push and shove. I'm just going to follow the steps that you lead me into. We ended up, I ended up in the Bible college, running the Bible college at Suncoast. I thought, okay, God, you're, you're, you're sorting all this thing. Then the senior pastor at the church, Chaz, stepped down. I thought, okay, well, maybe God, you're setting me up. Then he put his young fellow in place. And I thought, okay, God, well, I don't know what you're doing. It's, it's up to you. And so we ended up leaving Suncoast and, and looked around for a while. We went to a couple of other churches and none of them just felt like home. When we walked in here, it felt like home. It felt like this is the spiritual thing that I belong to. The life of the Spirit, the grace of God, the power of God. I think the first day we were here, we were both drunk on the floor for a while and after you'd prayed for us, Neil. A few months ago, and, uh, uh, and I just really felt our role was to support Neil and Nancy. That's what I believe that God had got us here, just to support. So we have done that to our best that, that we know. And a few months ago, Neil gave me a prophetic word, you may have remember it, which says, God spoke to you many years ago and he's been brooding over that word and the time is now. And that was that word that God gave me. The time is now. It's funny that God didn't surprise. I asked my wife, and uh, I said, did God speak to you? She said, no. I'm not surprised now either. <laughs> <laughs> and Jeb, Deb has had her own journey and how God has put us together, and that's a very interesting journey too. And God has placed us here. I want to encourage you that God has placed us here. This is not my choice. This is the leading of God, that he's placed us here. And so pastoring this church, this spiritual thing that God has, has built under Neil and Nance. That's what God has got. That is what we are pastoring. And I hold that in deep, deep respect of the foundation that has been laid, of what has gone before, of the, of the passion and desire and the prayer and all the things that Neil and Nance, that you have laid into this place. I, I deeply respect that. And the, the passion and the desire for God will not change. And that foundation, it's been a long uh, apprenticeship for me to step into that. And Ken, you were speaking to me yesterday and said, 
uh, you know, you've got your work cut out for you, but God has prepared you for this. I don't know if you understood how prophetic those words were. <laughs> but God has got us here. He's got us here. It's a, it's a, it's a God thing. I want to encourage you with that. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm so grateful that he's ordered our steps. In the beginning, God created man. He's got purpose for us. Created man, and he breathed into Adam the breath of life. The Spirit of God breathed into Adam. The Spirit, we need the Holy Spirit to breathe into us afresh. We need the Spirit of life to breathe into us. God will breathe life. You know, and uh, uh, we are representatives of him. When Jesus came, he was the word, the, f the, the word made flesh. He's the, he's the living word of God that, that was formed by God and made flesh. The Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary and Jesus was born. He was made flesh out of that word, the breath of life from the Spirit of God. You and I get born again and something of that word gets imparted into us and we get born again of the incorruptible seed of the word of God that lives and abides forever. And then the Spirit of God breathes upon that. He breathes upon the Word in us, and the Word again becomes flesh. Jesus is the Word made flesh. You and I are the flesh becoming the Word. As the Spirit of God breathes on us, there's something about the power of the Spirit to breathe life and impart to us. And, you know, we've got to keep a sweet relationship with the Holy Spirit. There's, let's, let's look at what the Holy Spirit does. John chapter 16, verses 13 to 15. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. 33 years ago, God spoke to me. He will tell us things to come. He tells us his plans and his purpose. The Spirit of God breathes life. He's a life giver. He's the one who carries the power of God. It was the Holy Spirit who showed Jesus what the Father was doing. Jesus gave up his inheritance to become a man. When he rose again, he took it back. The Holy Spirit declares truth to us. The Bible says everything belongs to the Father. All things. All things belong to God the Father. And when Jesus was resurrected, he gave all things to Jesus. And the Son gives us everything through the Holy Spirit. He gave us the Holy Spirit as, the, as an inheritance. It's part of what God gives to us. He gives us himself. The Holy Spirit reveals Christ to us. Christ shows us the Father. But some people have made the Holy Spirit such a, a, a it's like a, a secondary person. It's like somebody we know about. We don't talk about the Holy Spirit or, or we don't relate to the Holy Spirit. I think that's foolish. The Holy Spirit is God. He's God come to breathe life. Jesus said, I've come to give life and life more abundantly. And he's given it to us through his spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. We agreed on that? I mean, that's not strange doctrine. That's nice and straight up and down, isn't it? But here's what happens. <laughs> it is difficult to get the same fruit as the early church when we value the book we, they didn't have more than the Holy Spirit they did have. We've got to have good relationship with the Holy Spirit. Huh. It's the living word. The, the Bible is the word of God. It's inerrant. It's limitless. It's absolute truth. It doesn't change. It shouldn't be added to. It shouldn't be taken away from. The Bible is the word of God. It's absolute truth. When I was going through university, 
uh, uh, I told this story before, but I'll tell it again. When I was going through university, I was studying under uh, geology. And you know they say that all the rocks are really, really old. And you know they're millions of years old and we've, we can date them all and we've got all these different scenes of, of, of life. We've got the Pleistocene and the Eocene and, the, and the, you know, all these different scenes. <laughs> They've got all these different ages and they group the things together. And on Here's the fossils and this comes from the Pleistocene era and that comes from that era and all that sort of stuff. And I was studying all this and I'd just gotten saved and had an encounter with God and I'm going, what is going on? Your Bible says, your word says, God, that in the beginning you created everything and on the seventh day you created man. And how come all my professors at university are telling me that they're millions of years old? How come it's all old like that? How come, what's going on? And God spoke to me very, very powerfully. The Holy Spirit spoke to me. When the Holy Spirit speaks, it imparts faith and life. And faith and life came to me and God said, my word is absolute truth. And it just kept me all through those years of listening to that people trying to figure stuff out. It kept me. There's something powerful when God speaks. It keeps us. It keeps us amidst the rigours of the things that try and push us in the way we think, of smart people trying to figure things out of how things should be. Now, I'm not knocking smart people, but the Bible says knowledge puffs up. And I tell you, universities are full of proud people who think they know better than everybody else. But they don't know better than God. <laughs> they don't. God said, my word is absolute truth. And so when I knew that, when I had that resonating within my spirit, I was able to stand on the word of God and read it and say, okay, this is God, you're saying this. I've had an encounter with you. I know you're real. I know what you've done in my heart. I know how you're working. This is what you have said, and that life, that kept me. It resonated and rang like a bell within me through all those years of university. Your word is absolute truth. This Bible is absolute truth. But there is a way of reading this that people have just looked through here for principles. And the principles work. The principles are true. You know, you can have kingdom principles and, and read the principles out of the word of God and you study the word of God, but I want to tell you that God is not God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Bible. The Bible reveals God, but it doesn't contain him. It's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Are you hearing me? And the, the, the Bible is a living word. And the Spirit of God breathes upon the Word and, and speaks to us through it. I went through a whole thing where my dad rejected me when I became a Christian and he said, I have no son and I'm praying about it. And God spoke to me and says, I will never leave you or forsake you. And he became a dad to me. And then I was reading the Bible and found it in the Bible. Hebrews 13. I will never leave you or forsake you. And so as we walk with God, the Spirit of God speaks to us and he becomes our friend. Sometimes, you know, there's, there's a progression in relationship with God. Sometimes we're looking, God, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? God, I want to serve you. I want to do something. And we set ourselves up as servants, just like the disciples. I, you're the master. I'm the servant. I'll do whatever you say. <laughs> But at the end of those three and, a half Jesus, three and a half years, Jesus said to them, you know, you've, you've been servants, but now I call you friends. And God wants to be our friend. He wants us to be his friend. And God spoke to me very early on in my journey when I was reading Exodus about Moses, and he says, I will speak to you as a man speaks with his friend face to face. See, when the, when the Spirit of God speaks, the life that's imparted flows to us. We can become friends with God. But we've got to be friends with the Holy Spirit, not treat him like an afterthought or somebody else or you're over there somewhere. But the Holy Spirit is the one that Jesus has sent to us to be in us, to empower us, to equip us, to, to uh, help us walk in the same way that Jesus walked. He is our friend. We've got to spend time 
as a friend with the Holy Spirit. Make him your friend. Don't make him somebody you talk about. Make him your friend. He's with me. Whatever I've gone through, he's in here with me. When I'm, when I'm on my daily stuff, he's in here with me. When I'm driving down the road, he's in the car with me. When I'm, when I'm you know, going shopping, he's there with me. He's with me. He's my friend. He's the Holy Spirit. When I'm, when I'm facing challenges at work, he's with me. When I've when I'm got things that are, uh, I'm wrestling with in my thoughts, he's with me. When there's conflict, he's with me. Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is so much more than just somebody who comes along to, to you know, Jesus, I'm in strife, now I need you. No, make him your friend. Make him your daily journey. Make him the, 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 the part of your daily life that walks with you. When I got married to my beautiful wife in Lemon, I said, Deb, let's grow old together. Let's enjoy this journey. It's about friendship. And Deb was like a little, uh, what can I say? Little bunny. <laughs> she was like a little octopus. <laughs> she was stuck on me and she wouldn't let me go. <laughs> that is true. I said, darling, uh, you know, I'm going to go and help these men. We've got to do some stuff on the weekend. And she got all upset. I want to just spend time with me. And we had these bunch of men and we'd go and we'd help these single ladies move furniture or do something for them. And, and you know, I'd come back at the end of the day and Deb would be upset. I wanted you to spend time with me. I said, sorry, darling. We were just helping somebody that wasn't able to do it themselves. We were helping a single lady move. And she just totally changed. And she pulled the little suckers off and let me go. <laughs> I hope my preaching will prove one day. <laughs> but see, I was going to do that stuff. And Deb was back there. We went on with the Holy Spirit. He's with me through it, everything, every step, every breath, every part of the day, every part of the night, every waking moment, every sleeping moment, the Holy Spirit is in me. He's my friend. There's, there's no separating. There's no pulling off those. <laughs> and so we've got to treat him like a friend and talk to him. Build relationship with the Holy Ghost is the point of this. That, that don't study the word like you're just there to get some points out of it. Or you just want the Holy Spirit help me with my next study. What am I going to do? No, make him your friend who walks with you day by day, moment by moment, who loves on you, who, who will help you. He'll equip you, he'll empower you. Sometimes I don't know how to pray. Are you like me? Sometimes you think, what do I pray about that? This is a challenging situation. How do I pray about it? So the only way that I know to walk through that is to use the gift that God gives me in speaking in tongues. I don't know how to pray about this, God, but I'm lifting it to you. And so I lift that to you, Spirit of God. And I don't know what the words are, but I don't have to. But my heart is going out towards God and I let God put his words in my mouth to pray through that situation. Are you hearing this? We've got to know how to lock a hold of God and press in to break through. I'm believing for breakthrough for numbers of things. I'm believing for breakthrough for miracles. I'm believing for little Casey with autism, John Cannon's grandson. I'm believing for it. I'm believing for breakthrough. But you've got to spend some time with God for that breakthrough. When I was pastoring in country New South Wales, I had been there for about five years and uh, just, God, this is hard. I was the... 15th church in a town of 10,000 and I'd said to God, I'm not going to 
grow this church by pulling people out of other churches. I was the fourth Pentecostal church in a country, New South Wales, in this little town. And I did some hard yards there. And after about five years, we had about 30 single mums and kids. And I'm thinking, God, what am I doing here? I'm so on my best years of my life here, so on my energy. What's going on? And so I thought, I'll press into God. And so I fasted. I said, God, I am not going to stop fasting until you speak to me. We've got to know how to press in to hear the voice of God. God wants to help us, but we've got to walk with God. So I fasted. It only took a week of fasting, praying, God, speak to me, speak to me. And at the end of that week, God spoke to me and he said, I want to reach every home in this town. And something divine of God happened with that word. It stopped being my vision and became his vision. It stopped being about what I was trying to do and about what he wanted to do. Are you hearing this? It took me to really press into God, to hear God and get in line with what God wanted to do. So then we began to do things that would make a, an impact on the whole community rather than just trying to build my little church. We went into the schools and there was a great shortage of RI teachers. And so we said, look, we, we can't have a teacher for every class, so let's just take the whole year. You know, there's 100 kids in year three. Let's take the whole year and then we'll do 120 kids for year four. And we took the whole year. My wife and I went in and, and we took the, the whole year we had a hundred on. We took the school hall and we ran a program. We sang songs and had them jumping up and down and doing all sorts of stuff. And God moved. And we had a, a real move of the Spirit of God. And we began to impact the whole community rather than just trying to build our church. And I tell you, that word is still with me and it's still my desire that we would do something that would have an influence on the whole Sunshine Coast. Are you hearing me? That's what God wants. He wants to do something that's bigger than us. Hello? I'm not, I'm not believing for a big church. I'm believing to big, build big people. I'm believing to, to, to build big people who will have influence in this whole community. Come on. Come on. If you can hear the Spirit of God, there's, there's life in this. There's life from the Holy Ghost. We've got a big journey. We're getting into the schools next year. We're doing some stuff. <laughs> We've got some strategies. I'm believing, for, I'm believing for it, Graham. You're a dark horse, you are. <laughs> I'm believing that God is going to make way. And we had a great move of God in Inverell in that little country town. You know, one of the things that turned that community, I had two sons and they were in primary school and in that, in that primary school, they wanted a football team. My sons were quite athletic. They were pretty good. My young, eldest son was tall for his age and he became the star inside centre in that rugby league team. My other son was on the bench and, you know, he came in and he was really good as well. And so they be, go, played so well that, that they won... The, the whole competition throughout the area. So then they went to the region. Then they went to the state level and they had to go down to Sydney about three or four games. They, we'd drive all the way down to Sydney from where we were, like a six hour drive, took the whole um, football team and all the parents and we got to the grand final in the state New South Wales of the Westmont Shield Rugby League for primary. We got to the state grand final. The whole town was abuzz with it. And everyone was saying, who owns those two boys? And we went from being almost the pariahs, the outcasts in that little community, nobody wanted to know, to being the heroes, not because I was any good as a, a pastor, nothing I did, but because my sons were good at football. And we had breakthrough. And we had a, a great move of the spirit. We had church, and I tell you, that place was pumping. And, you know, we had kids just going wild for God and doing cartwheels and just loving it. It was just amazing. And the, the, the presence of God would come down and people were getting saved. And we saw miracles and we had miracle babies and all sorts of stuff going on. And, and we just had a, we tripled in one year. 
And then we bought a, a, a building in the middle of town right between KFC and McDonald's. And God made way. I tell you, when God comes, when the Spirit of God breathes, 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 life comes, life flows. The Spirit of God comes in power to change and bring life and impart. That's what we're believing for. Hello? Come on, come on, come on. Lift with us. Lift your vision. Lift, lift. We're, we're going somewhere, friends. We're going. I'm, I can tell you I've got so much going on inside of me. I don't know what to do with it. Oh, Jesus. It's going to be great, Sierra. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. That voice of yours is going to go out and touch thousands. I tell you what, God is going to move by his spirit. And, and you and I, we've just got to hang on for the ride <laughs> and believe God. He's coming in power again. He's coming in power. I'm believing for miracles. I'm believing for it. I'm believing that we're going to be able to influence this whole Sunshine Coast. God is going to give us something incredible because he wants it, not because it's anything about us, but it's of course what he wants. It's what God wants. Hello? It's what God wants because God has got a desire to reach every home in this community. God's will is that all men would come to a knowledge of the truth. All men. That's the desire and the vision of God. So we just get a, got to get on board with what God wants to do. One of the things that happens when we read the word of God is there's this classic conflict that happens. If we can read Proverbs 26, verse 4 and 5. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, lest you also be like him. And the next verse says this, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. So which one is it? We're trying to find wisdom here. Do we answer a fool or do we not answer a fool? What do we do? See, what happens is when we take the word of God above the spirit of God, we make laws out of it that become absolute. It's like, it's, and, and it leads us astray. We make these static boundaries become laws with no flexibility. But this is a living word. We need the Holy Spirit to breathe upon it and show us the way to go through rather than becoming a law. That's what the Holy Spirit does. It's alive. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. Jesus is alive. There you go. Keith knows the rest. <laughs> yeah, the old. That's the one. Do you know what that is called? It's called the folder roll. There's actually a name for that thing. The folder roll. Yeah, that's the name for it. Truth is multidimensional. <laughs> Division in the church occurs when people devote to just one layer of truth. So we have this one layer of truth and we forget the rest. The truth is multidimensional. In the Old Testament, you don't touch a leper because then you're unclean. In the New Testament, you laid hands on the leper and made them clean. There's a greater truth. Truth is multidimensional. There's depth to the word of God. We need the Holy Spirit to come and breathe life and impart and, and lift us into the greater levels of truth. Who's believing for greater revelation? Anybody? You're believing for greater revelation? This is one of my prayers that God, if you're bringing fresh revelation, I don't want to be an old wineskin that can't contain it because the fresh revelation will push against the old ways of thinking. It pushes against the old inflexibility that we have from our old truths. Every move of God has been persecuted by the move of God before it. So when new truth comes, I've got to somehow be flexible enough to resolve the conflict of the new truth against my old ones. It's gone quiet in <laughs> But that's how it works. See, see, so it doesn't mean the old truth is wrong, it just means there's new truth that builds upon it. 
So I'm believing for new revelation, but I've got to be a good steward of it because when the revelation can, comes, I can then point the finger and say, oh, that's not good. That doesn't agree with what happened before. We're believing for a fresh move of the Spirit. Anybody with me? Okay. So prepare to be flexible and allow the Spirit of God to have his way. That's the challenge. So I've got to look for what the fruit of that is, the fruit of the revelation, and not judge it according to our own inflexible ways of thinking. That's why we need the Holy Spirit, because he helps us to flex. <laughs> the Pharisees were rebuked by Jesus. He says, you don't understand the scripture or the power of God. We need to understand the power of God. We need to understand the scripture, but we also need to understand the power of God and what God can do the power in life that the Holy Spirit brings. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for your word today. Thank you for your truth. Spirit of God, I pray that you would breathe fresh life and fresh revelation and a fresh impartation, fresh vision, the freshness that you bring, Holy Ghost, the fresh wind of the Spirit would blow, the fresh wind of the Spirit. It's the freshness of your Spirit, of your voice, of what you do, Spirit of God, we're hungry for your voice, for your voice, for your voice. That you would speak, that you would breathe, that you would impart life. Father, we honour you, we love you. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for it. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We love you in Jesus' name, we exalt you. We exalt you, we exalt you, we exalt you. Holy Ghost, there's, there's, just while I'm praying, the Lord show me there's some people here with back issues right up in the, it's like in the centre of your your, your spine, right in the center there. It's like, it's, it's not lower, it's not high, it's in the middle. It's, it's something that catches you and, and the, the, the ache in there, it's like, it's always, you can't get comfortable. It's, it's just, it's a constant. Who is that? That's you? That's you? Three of you? Come on, we four? There's more. Holy Ghost. The power of God is in this place. The Spirit of God is flowing by His power. It's the Holy Spirit that heals, not me, but it is the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Come on out. Let me pray with you. Let me believe God with you. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. There's somebody that has pain across the shoulders. Across your shoulders. Your shoulders, like, how do I resolve this? What's going on? Sometimes... You think it's almost, it's, it's like deep in front of your shoulders. It's, it's, there's something across here. Who's that? Is that you, brother? And you? Come on. We'll, have, we'll pray for our shoulders over here. I'm believing for miracles. I'm pressing in. I'm believing. I'm expecting God to come because that's what he does. He's the spirit life. Thank you for your miracle power, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Just look to, look to Jesus, Betty, because the power of God's fallen on you. <laughs>